I just want to start this off by saying if you expected Aiton to be in the long-term plans of the Phoenix Suns after trading for Bradley Beal, I kinda don't feel bad if you were blindsided. But while yes, Aiton to Nurkic is a downgrade, I think given the Suns situation, this trade was not only inevitable but also a positive. While Nurkic can't play defense and I am a big proponent of Vern protecting bigs, Aiton isn't exactly an elite defender either, and I think the downgrade is more than worth it for the depth pieces, especially when Aiton's offensive impact will inevitably be limited with Beal, Book, and KD. I talked about the Suns after their overachieving free agency, and they finally made the move anyone who's paying attention knew was coming, so let's get into it. Before we get into this analysis of the Phoenix Suns, if y'all could like the video and sub to the channel, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton. We are closing in on 3K, so you know what I mean. Hopefully, we can get there pretty soon. I managed to somehow almost discuss the entirety of the eight and Nurkic swap in the intro, but since that is the center of this trade, <laughs> no, all right. for Phoenix, let's finish the job. One thing you have to consider is obviously the contract situation with the big three along with the fact that Aiton's relationship with the franchise was already fractured and would probably become more so with the inevitable less shots he'd be getting. Again, yes, it is a downgrade, but for the purposes of this new Phoenix Suns team with Brad Beal, I honestly think there's a scenario where you'd be better off with Nurkic. Let me explain. Yes, Nurkic is not a great defender, but neither is Aiton. Nurkic at least has the physical capabilities to at least body up on defense and has much better floor spacing abilities than Aiton, thus opening up the game more for your three perimeter assassins. Again, the presence of these three would have likely limited Aiton to at best 15-16 a night, probably less, probably more like 13-14, with a defensive drop off between the two that is more than made up for with not only the offensive impact of Beal, KD, and Book getting more shots, but also with the two badly needed depth pieces received in the deal. Before we discuss Nas Little and Grayson Allen, one move that I think could really elevate Phoenix would be one for a backup big. The first that comes to mind is potentially getting in on a Drew Holiday deal to Boston and trying to get Al Horford. If Boston wants Drew, they will almost certainly trade Al, so just a thought there. But again, I would have recommended this same exact thing if Aiton were still there. Now for the eight and removal impact that meets the common eye, the pieces they received along with Nurkic. Starting off with Grayson Allen, he's a career 40% three-point shooter on decent volume and can play some defense. He isn't wowing, but he does enough in the right places to be a decent contributor and a solid fit with your core. He also has a decent amount of playoff experience, mostly with Milwaukee the past few years. Again, he's not a perfect player, but for a roster without many depth options, he is a solid piece. Nasir Little is a pickup that I love as well. On a team that inevitably has a ton of veterans and older guys, he is a nice offset from that as a young player. Little is 23 years old and on a pretty solid long-term contract, making around 6 to 7 million over the next 4 seasons. If Phoenix wants to move forward with this core of Beal, Booker, and Durant, finding affordable contracts like these for role players will be crucial. Little shot a career best 36.7 from deep last season and hopefully the three-headed monster will get him some good looks. While yes, Aiton to Nurkic was a downgrade, that was expected when you not only get off a negative contract, but also acquire two more rotation pieces in the deal. If you're a Phoenix fan that's still mad about Aiton, I get it, I guess, but as I stated, there really wasn't much of a path forward with him, Beal, Booker, and Durant on the books. I think this team is looking almost as good as it can with the assets and flexibility present. The only thing this team really misses outside of a backup big, as I said, is a lead playmaker. I think the playmaking by committee of Beal, Booker, and KD will work out better than some think, and that Beal, Booker, and KD are all better playmakers than some may think, but going after someone like a TJ McConnell could be very, very beneficial. Again, as I said, I think a backup big who specializes in rim protection could also be very beneficial in trying to elevate this team to a championship level. As for the remainder of the roster, I really like what Phoenix was able to do with essentially only minimum contracts. I'm going to discuss this here, but if you want even more in-depth analysis on the free agent class in particular, you should go check out my son's vid from a couple months back. Starting off with Eric Gordon, I do really like this pickup. While he's obviously older, he's a good Swiss Army Knife kind of bench piece that can give you a lot on the floor. He's a career 37% shooter from deep and shot 42% in his time playing with other stars with the Clippers last season. I think Gordon rotting away on the Rockets for the past few years altered the public's perception of him, but on a contending team, he can still play a good role. Next up, we have some more shooters, Keita Bates Diop and Yuta Watanabe. Bates Diop is the generally perceived fifth starter and for good reason. 
While he only really found his shooting stroke last season, Keita had a breakout year averaging almost 10 points a night on 39.4% from deep. If he can come close to replicating this, he will be an outstanding role player for Phoenix. As for Yuta, I love this pickup as well. A good sniper is always a great piece to have on a roster, and while Phoenix has a few, they don't come near Watanabe's 44.4% from deep last season. Combine this with some level of familiarity with KD from playing with him in Brooklyn, and I think Yuta will prove to be a great piece for this roster. As for the rest of the offseason pickups, I think the Drew Eubanks and Chemezi Metu signings will be much more important now. Whether that is for better or for worse, we will have to see. They also might have some sort of plan for Bol Bol, but I'm honestly done holding out hope for that to work. But again, we will see. Again, as for the rest of the roster, you know, they got guys like Damian Lee and Josh Akogi, and I'm pretty sure they cut Ish Wainwright, actually. So, uh, no, he's not there anymore. But Jordan Goodwin, again, they have a solid bench. You know, it's kind of hard to do much when you have three guys. I mean, Book isn't making, you know, he's making 36 right now. But, you know, he's not making 50 yet, but he will be soon. But also in the offseason when they were making all these moves, they still had eight on the books. But again, you know, I, I like what this Suns team did. Me personally, I probably wouldn't have traded for Beal in the first place. But it, but my logic there would have been like you wouldn't have been able to really field a team as good as they have right now with those three. So, hey, I mean, I you know, I, I like the Beal move personally. I might have went out and did something else and tried to, you know, I, I mean, I don't really know what else you would have did uh, off top right now. But I like this Suns team. Again, we do got a lot of teams out west, you know, obviously Denver. Uh, the Lakers, you know, Golden State, Clippers, Grizzlies. Uh, I, I think Memphis will be really good when Ja comes back. Again, man, we got a ton of, ton of teams out west, but I think the Phoenix Suns should be right in the thick of it. Again, man, I, I just want to talk about Devin Booker's playoff run last year because he was just ridiculous. I mean, if he can even come close to replicating that and KD can play good and Beal can do his job... Again, you know, again, like Nurkic to, or Aiton to Nurkic, yes, it's obviously a downgrade, but I'm not going to lie, like, if, if they can go out and get a backup rim protector, I think this team could be a real, real problem. I don't know what exactly they have left, they just have a bunch of second rounders, so again, you know, Nurkic, maybe, you know, four second rounders or something for, you know, a, some big and a, maybe another piece. Again, I don't know, uh, I don't know what the future holds, you know, season hasn't even started yet, but... I do like this trade, y'all. Like, again, as I've said a million times, th there was no path forward with those four. Like, it just wasn't going to happen with the new CBA rules and, like, everything. And Aiton didn't want to be there also. This is another thing you have to consider. Like, Aiton didn't really want to be there, and I don't think it was going to work out that well. I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I think, you know, you know, like, he could have been revitalized on defense under Vogel, but I think he would have gotten, like, irritated at the lack of shots he would be getting because of, again, Beal, Booker, KD. And because of the lack of shots he's getting, I, again, I, I already explained this whole thing, but the lack of shots he's getting you're better off having a floor spacer in there if neither of them are going to be elite defenders, you know, what I, or even, like, really, really good defenders. Like, you know, Aiton, like, like, I don't know why everyone's like, oh, like, oh my God, like, oh, Nurkic can't guard a traffic cone. Like, I, I, I guess Aiton could guard a traffic cone, but I don't know if Aiton could guard a, a, a traffic cone with wheels. You know what I mean? Like, I, like Aiton just isn't, like, this all-world... I don't think anyone was really making him out to be an all-world defender, and I, I, I didn't really see that in particular, but I saw the point of Nurkic's defense being, like, the main point when, like, it's not, like... It's a drop-off, yeah, but the thing with Aiton it, it was his motor. And it was, he wasn't bodying up and getting on guys. And Nurkic, I, I like, like, Nurkic will do that. Like, I, I, again, like, right, like, 290, big, kind of like, you know, and, and I feel like he hears, you know, everything that everyone's saying. And he might, and again, with Frank Vogel, he he could, again, I he, he could only be so good as a defender. But I think the difference there is going to be, like, I, I don't know if I'd say negligible, but, I again, I think Phoenix won this deal, but... Again, if y'all enjoyed this one, please like it up and sub the channel. Comment down below, you know, your thoughts on everything that's going on with the Phoenix Suns right now. If y'all really, really, really still hate this move, uh, I guess I get it. I don't really, but uh, that's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up and sub the channel. It does help me out a ton, a ton, a ton, more than you know. And I'm out. Peace.